Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it's finally time to check out the stuff in 5.2. We were granted a little bit of early access by Creative Assembly, which means that I'm able to have a few videos prepared, but only around 24 hours notice we actually had, so yeah. I'm going to try my best to cover as much as possible. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Deeps, the brand new mechanic for the Dwarfs, which is available to you right this instant. And yeah, you're going to have a little bit of fun because it's going to synergize with your other mechanics. The first thing you would have noticed is, of course, there is a brand new resource known as the High King Decrees. Every Dwarf faction will start with one. But characters such as Fulgrim and Belagor will also have an extra one at the start of their campaign. Don't you worry, as it doesn't take too long to pick some up. And this is a resource that does actually replenish as you progress through your campaign. You'll get extra ones too. And through the tech tree, you'll have the ability to gain a few more through the guilds line. So it's stuff that you're going to naturally start picking up anyway, considering that construction time reduction and tech revolving population surplus is one of those beneficial ones for you. Especially if you like building both tall and wide. It does depend on the player. Yes, this is supposed to be for a slower campaign, but it does synergize very well for your expansionist style, like, for example, myself. Now, to get access to the deeps, you'll need to build up the Great Gates. You'll see that they're next to the main building for all your settlements. This does require population surplus to get in there, and it's not too hard to get population running with the dwarfs, especially if you get an Age of Reckoning out there, but it can take a small amount of time. Building the first level does cost a bit of money, and then the second level does cost some oaf gold. Oaf gold generation isn't too bad now, thanks to the deeps itself. Something that is quite important to note here is that you shouldn't feel like you have to build the deeps from the very beginning, by the way, as obviously population surplus is used for your other settlements to upgrade them to get access to some better units, and things can get a little bit expensive within the deeps. Now, the Deeps works as an extension to your settlement, meaning that it kind of has the same feeling as a Skaven Undercity, but you can only put them in your own settlements. This allows you to get extra building slots, more benefits, and so on. Things do get a little bit interesting here, though. For example, if you go into it, you might see that there is a destroyed Doom Sphere or an inactive Doom Sphere, and there's a chance for it to explode, meaning that if you want to actually get rid of it, you're going to need to have a Master Engineer near there. It's a negative, yes, but I actually quite like the theming there. Obviously, you need someone who knows what they're doing to be able to disarm a Doom Sphere before it blows up, essentially, the settlement. Other than that, there are some blockers that you're going to have to deal with, as that's the only way to expand there. So there are cases where just upgrading is fine, or if you're not building inside of a mountain, you will have to get some certain tech to be able to open up the blockers. Because yes, interestingly enough, you don't have to only build the deeps in the mountains, it's just they're going to be better in the mountains. This does mean that you're going to be able to get quite a lot of extra building slots across your vast empire if you decide to start building more and more through it. I've only been showing these so far in major settlements, but yes, you can have the deeps in minor settlements too, which again, loads and loads of benefits. Very early on, if you know how to funnel cash into your faction quite early. Now, I was pleasantly surprised with just how many buildings there were in the deeps, because you do have that, like, settlement building within this. This will allow you to get some extra High King Decrees, all the way up to plus two. So, as you start building up your first one, you're going to open yourself up to get a lot more. You do also have a lot of infrastructure here. There is a lot to play around with, and it's done in such a way which it does genuinely feel like your settlement has gotten so much larger. It's going to cost some money for you to be able to get that, but keep in mind that there's a lot of bonuses in here that you're going to want. Some buildings, for example, have upkeep reduction for all units faction-wide. I'm not sure if that's going to get nerfed in the future, I imagine so. You have also noticed that some buildings have some negatives, like for example the Underdeep itself, but it does then get increased and then becomes like a proper buff area. There's massive amounts of ways to generate extra oaf gold, extra growth, a lot of different types of resources that you're generally going to need. And you would have also noticed that certain things have extra benefits. There are some buildings where if you have more income coming in, well, that means that you're going to have more bonuses. If you have certain buildings built up, certain techs, it's a great way to see something very, very structured. Obviously, it's not as detailed as, say, for example, the Chaos Dwarfs, but it does make the Dwarfs feel a little bit more on that level mechanically. 
this is something that you're gonna be using fairly often. Again, I do have to stress out that these can be fairly expensive, though the benefits are very much there. Hell, one of the buildings I found very, very useful as a aggressive type of player, the drinking halls, uh, you'll see that in just a second, where it increases the hero capacity of Fanes, Master Engineers, and Runesmiths by one. So if you're a person that likes bringing in loads of heroes, and I imagine that you do because they're generally quite strong, it's obviously a thing that you're going to want a beeline for. However, that one being such a powerful building is locked behind a fair amount of technology. I like this system. It's very, very different. And the reason why I wanted to cover this first is because it shows that Creative Assembly are looking to experiment more even after we've had a major rework for a race. The Dwarfs just recently had a very big rework when it came to Thrones of Decay. Shortly after we've gotten this, it makes me quite optimistic for the future because I thought the Dwarfs were fine. Yes, yeah, sure, some people didn't but just getting some extra stuff and not removing everything that's just basically been implemented anyway, just more additions, means that we could be in for a very good time as we get more patches down the line. This is something that Creative Assembly have stated they'd like to do to bring more races and factions in line with Game 3. There's a few defensive structures too which can allow you to close off the gates and basically just buckle down, I guess, if you're one of those really defensive players, or just give you a bunch of leadership during siege battles and so on, which does help. Like I said earlier in a previous video, if you're going to deal with an enemy attacking you constantly, you could have a very defensive crack just there to keep the enemy busy. Now, what you would have noticed is that the normal deeps have six slots, one normal settlement, and then five buildable ones. Now, there are some special locations which will give you access to eight slots instead. One as your settlement and then seven buildable slots. These are Karak Eight Peaks, Skaven Blight, and then finally Zar Nogarund. So if you take those locations, you'll be able to get even more powerful deeps. Meaning that if you're playing as Velagar and you're going straight down for Karak Eight Peaks, which you can normally do in around seven turns or so, depending on the player. Keep in mind that the AI difficulty has changed very recently. Yeah, you're going to get your bonuses from getting Karak 8 Peaks, and you're also going to get a very strong deeps to be able to build up. If you're playing as the other characters, yeah, you can incentivize making your way over there if that's what you want. Don't worry, they'll be there, unless some other dwarf has taken it, and you can get some bonuses from some of the buildings if the dwarfs are building up. Again, you're not incentivized to kill off other dwarfs. This has been a thing since Thrones of Decay. You're there to just kind of expand the Kara's ankle. Now, before we end this video, I want to give you some thoughts regarding how this has gone from my perspective. I am not a defensive player. In fact, I've been playing the Dwarves hyper-aggressively, and I've still been able to use the Deeps to my advantage. Getting Oath Gold, for example, is very beneficial, as you'll be able to unlock quite a few good items with that. So my playstyle, and if you play very aggressively with the Dwarves, that has not changed whatsoever. In anything, it's just made it much better for you. The AI will make use of the Deeps as far as I'm aware, and I have seen Dwarf AI perform a little bit better, but keep in mind that that has to do with Faction Potential, which is a random roll when a campaign starts, and also the fact that the AI has gotten a little bit better in campaign with this recent patch. If you're trying to beeline for the deeps, it's going to take around seven turns or so as... Well, that's where I got it from because I was still building up locations to get my normal settlements up and running to be able to actually get some other benefits in case the AI decided to start dogpiling on me. I would say that the benefits from the deeps does come in quite well, but it can be kind of costly early into your campaign. So you probably would not want to spend that much cash from the very beginning. Realistically, waiting until turn 12 or so until you have a decent amount of cash, or if you've gotten into some pretty good battles and been able to generate a decent amount of income there, then you can start whenever. I think that it's going to be a learning curve for some people, but in a great way. Again, I'm starting to see the dwarfs after this recent update in a very much comparable way to the Chaos Dwarfs, which ultimately is going to make them much more fun to play. I did try a defensive campaign. It wasn't really for me, and that's mostly because I don't like staying still. If I know that my force can push and take a few settlements, I'm going to try that. Some players, I have seen some streamers, for example, do like playing much slower and getting their bearings and just building up their settlements as much as they can. I feel like you're more than able to with this. You still have to keep an eye for the Age of Reckoning stuff. Yes, there is still the negative there. But I can thankfully say that if you have been building up your deeps, 
you will be able to negate those negatives quite well and either even out or even just completely ignore them and get stronger benefits. Structured and more detailed stuff for Total War is always going to be great and it's something that I'm hoping for in not only future DLCs but future games too. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. There's going to be a few videos today. Have a great one guys and I'll see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.